Good evening, Mr. Bond fans. In June of 2022, I uploaded a video where I gave my two cents on what I considered to be some of the major contenders to be the next James Bond. You know, the names that are banded around the tabloids all the time. Well, it's been pretty much a year since that video, and we still have no new James Bond, but we do still have an awful lot of names in contention. Some of these very much new on the scene, and some of which people commented on my previous video saying, uh, oh, I'm so surprised that you didn't mention so-and-so, and then I'm like, I'm so surprised I didn't mention so-and-so either. It goes to show just how wide this net is that even after talking about 20 plus actors last year I'm gonna be talking about another 20 plus in this video. So uh, well, let's get started shall we as before I'm gonna be dishing out uh, full martinis or spilled martinis as a thumbs up thumbs down Rating system to indicate where I stand on the individual in question potentially becoming James Bond And we are going to begin with probably the biggest most notable omission from my video of last year And I can't believe that this guy slipped my mind in June 2022. Taron Egerton. Taron Egerton, obviously of Kingsman fame, but I've seen this actor, I've seen most of his films actually. Uh, there's Kingsman films, obviously, but he was in Eddie the Eagle, which I thought was okay, and I thought he was great in it. Rocket Man replayed Elton John most recently as sort of Tetris. I thought he was really good in that. And he was also in the Apple Plus miniseries Blackbird. Again, I, I thought he was really good. I think he's a really great actor and a really cool, interesting presence. There's stuff that I seek out. I don't know if I would have been that terribly excited about a Tetris movie otherwise, but seeing his name on it, I was like, okay, great, I will I will check this out. He's always a, a very likable, affable screen presence. And given his role in Kingsman, he certainly, you know, he's already had a trial run at Bond, surely. I mean, you know, a smartly dressed spy with gadgets bedding women, and, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, it, on paper, it makes an awful lot of sense. It's, you barely even need to screen test the guy, <laughs> just, like, watch the Kingsman films. That being said, in a lot of ways, I think it could well be the Kingsman films that are gonna hold him back from ever being James Bond. He's been in two of them, um, and they've been talking about doing another one. I feel like they've, they've talked about it for years, like ever since the Golden Circle came out in, when was it, 2017? I feel like every year we have some new comments from either Taron Egerton or director Matthew Vaughan being like, ah oh, yes, we're, we're starting up the third one, we're gonna be filming in six months, and then six months go by and the film never materializes, so I don't know if maybe he's just too associated with those films and that brand, and I don't know if contract-wise, like, you know, maybe he owes them a Kingsman film, and they could, you know, the, the danger is that you announce him as James Bond, and then all of a sudden they go into making another Kingsman film, and you've got a James Bond star who's also starring in a rival spy series, so I, I, I don't know, I feel like some of that contract negotiation stuff could potentially be quite off-putting for Eon. This is one of those where it's, uh, I really like Taron Egerton an awful lot. I would be quite happy, actually, in all honesty, seeing what his version of Bond would be. But I just don't think that, c considering his filmography and where he is in his stardom, actually, because I think he is, you know, quite a prominent figure. People know his name. Um, I think that's probably holding him back, so head over heart, he's gonna get a spilled martini, but a regretful spilled martini. Next up we have Jack O'Connell, another early 30s English actor, uh, and another actor that I have seen an awful lot of his work, and I really like him. It's funny that he's another ex-Skins cast member. I remember in the last video we talked about Dev Patel and Nicholas Holt, and I, yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, you're, you're in Skins for a couple of years and you become a Bond contender a few years later. I'm sure that absolutely no one outside of the UK <laughs> even knows what Skins is. But yeah, I think that Jack O'Connell is a really solid actor. Um, the thing about him is, and there may well be a film that I've not seen in his filmography that would speak to this. I've only ever seen him in these kind of very gritty, very working class roles. Uh, I'm thinking about, you know, This Is England, Eden Lake, Harry Brown, which I know are all films from quite early on in his filmography. All films that I have a lot of time for and really like, but he plays that kind of, you know, that hoodie, excuse the term, but chavvy kind of character. I know that re recently he was in Lady Chatterley's Lover and even in that, you know, he's who's, who's playing the stable hand? Oh, it's him. You know, it's uh, if you want a guy to play a, a, a lower class character, 
in anything, <laughs> I guess you go for Jack O'Connell. But I think he does possess something of that quality of uh, what Sean Connery had, quite frankly. Like, I think it was very much, it's very much well known that Connery rough diamond, like when they got him for Bond, Terence Young had to take him out to the tailors and the, you know, teach him the wines and the upper class sort of routine that he would sort of have to... Uh, play to if he was going to be James Bond, and I think that that mix of his very much working class upbringing and roots, but with the more high class Bondian elements, really worked very well. And I think that Craig embodied some of that to a similar degree, and with both of those being so popular, I could see Eon quite wanting to repeat that same formula. I also think O'Connell has that kind of, you know, he's he's a very handsome man, but he does have that kind of craggy, like, Daniel Craig sort of, like, weather-beaten face. Um, and, you know, again, Craig immensely popular. They might well want to, you know, recreate that instead of going for your more traditionally, you know, pretty actors. And, you know, I think he's the right age. I think he could work very well well in the part, Jack O'Connell is going to get a full martini of approval from me. Another name that probably should have well appeared in my video of last year because I feel like this guy's name has been banded around as a potential Bond for years, uh, and that name is Dan Stevens. I'm very familiar with this actor, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that I have not seen The Guest, which is the film that people hold up as like, oh that's the, that's the Dan Stevens James Bond audition film that you need to see. Uh, I've mainly actually seen him in like comedies and sort of, you know, the costume drama stuff, Downton Abbey of course which he famously um, exited uh, and then kind of reinvented himself, like lost a lot of weight and started taking on these action-y sort of roles. Um, and I think he's a really good actor. Um, I loved him in Eurovision Song Contest, the story of Fire Saga. It's weird because I think people do know of Dan Stevens. Like, I don't think he's, you know, one of those actors where you're like, who? <laughs> and, and yet, I don't know if he really has a... You know, like, Taron Egerton has the Kingsman films, he's just sort of the face of those. Dan Stevens doesn't really have a role associated with him all that closely, I don't think. I think Beauty and the Beast is probably his biggest, um, on a global stage film. So I think career-wise, he could well be in a very good place to become James Bond. He is... Uh, this year going to be turning 41, and I still think they're going to be going for someone, you know, mid-30s um, age. He does have the piercing blue eyes. I think he's got really cool, sharp features, which feel very Fleming Bond. And yet, I just feel like the boat might have already sailed on this. So, I'm sorry, Dan Stevens. This is another regrettable spilled martini. <laughs> Theo James. I feel like his name has been coming up an awful lot recently because uh, he was very notable in the latest season of The White Lotus. Uh, despite that, though, like, I've been familiar with this actor for quite a long time. Like, he was, he was in an episode of Downton Abbey. Um, but he's been very much around. He was in the Divergent series, which I've not seen, but, um, you know, seen in posters and whatnot. He was in an Underworld film. Um, I will, however, always know him. Oh, no, wait, he was in two Underworld films. Wow. God, how many of those things did they make? But I will probably always know him best, and this is probably not the most flattering <laughs> things to remember him for. He's always gonna be the asshole that got shit on his nose <laughs> from the Inbetweeners movie. And I, I like this actor. Um, I, I, I feel like he's too... he's, he's, he's pretty. He's, he's probably a bit too pretty to be James Bond. And for the for the fact that I just, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't see past that in between as movie. I don't know if people outside of the UK even know that that film exists or watch it, but I've only seen it once and it was like over 10 years ago and yeah, so much of it sticks in my mind and he has a very notable moment in it that I just, I don't know if I'd be able to look past if he was James Bond, so... Sorry, Theo, spilled martini. Paul Mescal next, and talk about someone who, like, exploded on the scene, like, very quickly. I feel between Normal People um, and After Sun, uh, he got nominated for a bunch of awards for that show and that film, um, and his name is kind of everywhere. He's gonna be in Gladiator 2. <laughs> um, like, really, um, his, you know, presence has just sort of gone from zero to a hundred in no time at all. Nothing to everything, you might say. He's an Irish actor, and he's a bit on the younger side, actually, of uh, these potential Bond candidates at 27. 
Um, but I, I think there's a maturity to his features which uh, could lend him well to being a Bond candidate, to be perfectly honest. And I think he is a really good actor, and I think that he probably is the kind of actor, if they were to be casting a James Bond like this year or something, I think he is the kind of actor that they will be looking for. Like, you know, just to go back to Taron Egerton, he's had a lot of high-profile roles, very commercial, successful, and I think that they will probably, much more, much like they did with Daniel Craig, look for someone who's been, you know, in quirkier things, to be perfectly honest, um, you know, very much lauded in acting circles, but hasn't quite had that it feels like I'm underselling Paul Mescal to say that he hasn't had a breakout here, because I feel like, again, his name is everywhere. I feel like people know this guy. Certainly here in the UK, anyway, Normal People was very successful. It'll be interesting to see how Gladiator 2 pans out, and like, like I said, like he's, you know, a bunch of films in post-production and, you know, filming that he's a part of now, so I think we're going to be seeing a lot of him probably next year onwards in much bigger budget fare. Um... I really like him, and I think he would actually be, if they are going to go for a younger, like, you know, pre-30 years old Bond, I think he'd be kind of excellent, um, and someone who could well, main, you know, be in the role for many years. Um, he gets a full martini from me. Jeremy Irvine next, or the kid from War Horse, as I will forever know him. Uh, he's been around for some time. He was recently in uh, Treadstone, the Bourne Identity um, series on Amazon, which I, I think got cancelled, didn't it, after one season? Right, yeah, it was cancelled after one season, but he was, like, the lead role in that. So, you know, he's, he's already got his spy thriller credentials. Certainly not a household name, I don't think, despite having a very solid filmography and has been in, you know, several big films and TV shows. I still think he's waiting for that, you know, breakout hit. Uh, and who knows, Bond could may well be that. He's 32 years old. I think he's quite well placed. Again, <laughs> he's on that sort of prettier side of the facial features. Uh, and I think that someone a bit more rugged, like a Jack O'Connell or Paul Mescal, could, you know... Um, be more appealing to Eon. That being said, very solid actor, like him very much. He's going to get a full martini glass from me. It's slightly less full than uh, the previous ones I've given, but uh, hey, I think he'd be fine. Tom Ellis, another name that could well have appeared on the list um, last year. I feel like his name has been banded around in you know, potential Bond circles for some time. Um, I know him best from his uh, supporting role in the sitcom Miranda, but I get the sense that most people probably know him uh, uh, from the main role in Lucifer. I've never actually watched that series, um, so I have no idea how he is in it, but I know that he is, you know, he, he's, a, he's a household name. I do think he very much has a reputation of being a television actor, uh, and his filmography is, you know, quite sparse in, in comparison with TV, and that's totally fine, obviously. Uh, but I, 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 I don't know, I feel like, again, I feel like Eon-like actors, if they're going to go for the Daniel Craig mold, they like actors who have done quirky little dramas and, you know, character pieces here and there, and I just don't know if he has the filmography that they would be looking for. Plus, he's 44 now, so again, I think he might just be a, a little bit too old by the time they would get start filming the next one, I think, you know. Maybe a little too old, so um, spilled martini glass for Tom Ellis. George Mackay next. Uh, this is another actor who I feel like it's also similar to um, some of the previous ones we've talked about. I feel like he is known, like he's been in a lot. I'm just looking at his filmography. He's been in an awful lot of stuff um, and TV as well. Um, and yeah, I don't know if he is exactly a household name yet. I've seen him in several things, um, a fair few comedies, actually. Sunshine on Leith, uh, Pride. He was in 1917, Sam Mendes directed, of course. I thought he was excellent in that. I, I really like that film. He was in Munich, The Edge of War, uh, which I have not seen, but, you know, spy credentials. At 31, he's, you know, on the younger end of the scale, I suppose, but he, he does have the, the, you know, he's got a very boyish face, and I've, I mainly associate him with sort of young, um, idealistic, uh, innocent sort of roles, to be perfectly honest. I think he does just have a look of innocence about him that doesn't feel quite right for Bond. That being said, there might well be a film in his filmography where he plays it a bit harder, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, I, I think he is very much a, 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 a very gifted actor, and I have no doubt that he could do it. 
Um, but I would, I just haven't seen an example of it. This is a tough one. If they were going to go down a young Bond route, I think that he would fit really well. Um, but like I say, I think that th there are benefits to having a sort of a craggier, more lived-in face that I don't think he has. I am still going to give him a full martini glass, but it's just barely full. It's almost spilling. It's like, it's full on the table and the waiter just knocked the table and it dropped a few, a few drops spilled out of it. Matt Smith. Uh, I can be very quick with this because <laughs> th this is a name that came up in the comments of the previous video and I was like, oh wow, I didn't think his name was in contention at all. Um, and indeed, I think he's Doctor Who. I, I think he's far too well known for that role. Um, and, you know, he's got a very successful career he's house of the dragon now um i think you, you know i i really like this actor i like him an awful lot but for bond uh, I, I i don't see it happening spilled martini glass map sorry and on a similar note we have kit harrington uh very well known around the world for game of thrones he's Jon snow and i think that that association would probably keep him back from being James Bond. I know that whenever I talk about this, people always bring up, well, Roger Moore was the saint and Pierce Brosnan was Remington Steele on TV. And yes, but I, I think the landscape is just different now. Um, and I think that Kit Harrington is just, he's just known globally. If he were cast as Bond, the headline would be Jon Snow <laughs> is James Bond. Um, great meme potential, <laughs> but uh, no, I, you know, Kit Harrington, actor that I really like. Again, I've seen him in stuff, but yeah, spilled martini glass kit. Chiwetel Ejiofor next, uh, Naomi Harris's uh, choice for the next James Bond, apparently. Um, I really like this actor. I've seen him in many films. Like, I'm just looking at them now. Oh, God, Sherlock Gnomes was the first one that my eyes uh, landed on, which is probably not the best testament to his uh, acting ability. Serenity, Kinky Boots, Children of Men, American Gangster, uh, Salt, 12 Years a Slave, obviously. He, he's, a, he's a big star. Um, and, you know, very smooth. Um, I think that at 45, you know, too old, basically. Um, and I think probably a bit too well-known a face on cinema screens uh, from other supporting parts to potentially be James Bond. So, um, sorry, Naomi Harris. <laughs> I, I, I see that martini on the table in front of you and I'm coming and I'm knocking it over. <laughs> Charlie Hunnam is another name that I could probably have included in um, last year's video because, again, just another name that's been swirling around in potential Bond circles for so long. Um, he's 43, which I think makes him just a bit too old for the part now um, if they were looking for someone with you know a good deal of longevity um, I think he's really cool I've seen a bunch of stuff that he's in um, the gentleman queer as folk Pacific Rim like I think he's a really really good very talented actor and I think 10 years ago I would have like been like you know, waving the flag for him very much but now I just eh, I just think a little bit too old. Okay, Ben Barnes was a name that came up um, on my previous year's video, and I must say that I never even, he was in, I mainly know him as the, what was he, King Caspian? Yeah, in a couple of the um, Chronicles of Narnia films, um, including one that was uh, directed by Michael Apted, director of uh, The World Is Not Enough, of course. And yeah, I feel like he was in a lot, in sort of like the late noughties, just looking at his filmography. I saw Easy Virtue, Stardust, Dorian Gray. He was in a bunch of stuff, and then of course he was in Westworld. I really enjoyed um, that, and he's Currently, uh, the lead in Shadow and Bone, which I have not seen. I couldn't believe when I saw that he's 41 years old. I thought he was sort of, uh, you, you know, mid-30s. I thought he was closer to my age, to be perfectly honest. He still, you know, looks very youthful, um, judging from the photos uh, online. Very good, very solid actor. Um, just doesn't fit into the Bond mold for me. Um, and even 10 years ago, I don't know if I would have thought that. So, um, yeah, sorry, Ben, it's a spilled martini. Okay, Will Poulter is another name that comes up um, quite a bit these days um, when uh, talking about future James Bonds. I feel like he's obviously had a very big, major uh, hit with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. He was a significant role in that, and I think people, he, I mean, 
you know, he has very unconventional features. Uh, I think he's, you know, very handsome, but he's so kind of recognizable that I think once you've seen him in something, you will probably remember him. Uh, I've seen a bunch of, again, God, he was in another Chronicles of Narnia film as well. He was in the Maze Runner films, uh, Son of Rambo, he was in as a kid, a very sweet film, I recommend that. Where the Millers, he was in, very memorable there. Uh, and Midsummer, again, very memorable. Still ki kind of perfectly positioned to have of a major lead breakout hit movie sometime very soon. I think he's he's only 30 years old, so I think he's at a very good age for it. Um, and I, I do really like him as an actor. I think he's immensely talented. Um, I'm gonna give him a full martini glass. I think that he could be really good in the part. Another name that's kind of cropped up after being in uh, something of a hit recently, uh, Jack Loudon, who was in the Apple uh, spy series Slow Horses. I've not seen that film. I've seen Jack in uh, Dunkirk. And just from seeing clips online and pictures and stuff, I, I think he could actually be really good. He's Scottish, so, you know, following in the footsteps of Sean Connery, which is never a bad thing. Uh, he's 33 years old, which I think is just a good age. Um, and I, I, you know what, I, I think he's got He's got features that just look so... You know when some people just look like they belong in the 1920s or something? I think he was perfectly cast for Dunkirk, because I think, yeah, there, there is just something about his face that looks really like 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 he's travelled in time from a hundred years or something. And I think that that could be an asset if you were looking to have a more Fleming-influenced James Bond. Um, if I'm not a fan of this idea, but God, if they did go back in time and set Bond in the 50s or 60s or whatever, I think he has just the right look to seamlessly fit in with that environment. Otherwise, I think he has, like, really good cold eyes, very sharp features. Um, th this is an enthusiastic full martini glass from me. Okay, up next is Tom Hughes, an actor that I couldn't believe was 38, to be perfectly honest. I thought he was much younger than that. Very youthful looks. This is someone who I've been familiar with uh, for some time. I've seen, you know, a bunch of his films at uh, Cemetery Junction, uh, Sex, Drugs, Rock and Roll, Red Joan, which is a uh, Judy Dench uh, spy drama where she's, uh, well, I, I won't spoil it, but um, it's interesting. I, if you're a Dench fan, I, I, I would recommend checking it out. He's had a really good, solid career in, like, film and TV. Um, and again, uh, kind of similar to Will Poulter, he has very recognizable features. I don't know why, but you know when some people, like, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that I'll be perfectly honest, I didn't know this guy's name until I was, like, I was doing my research for all this video and seeing, like, all right, who are the current contenders, who's on the bookies' websites, and who's on the, you know, the tabloid lists and stuff, and his name did come up, and I was like, I know him from somewhere, and sure enough, seen a bunch of stuff with him in. I think he's probably a bit too pretty to be Bond. Uh, again, I know this this comes up for me quite a bit, but I do, I do feel like there's a... A certain ruggedness that is beneficial to have when you are James Bond, even though I would describe Roger Moore and Pierce Brosnan as a couple of the prettier looking Bond actors, they still have that bit of grit to them, and maybe he could bring that, I don't know, but um, I, I, yeah. I am going to spill over my martini for Tom Hughes. Oliver Jackson Cohen next, another name that could well have probably been um, on the list last year. Um, I can't believe that he's English. Like, I, I think I mainly know him from, uh, well, The Invisible Man and uh, The Haunting of Hill House. Like, those are the two things that I most know him from. Uh, and he plays American in both of them. Uh, and he's just a very convincing accent. I just thought he was American. He looks American. There is something about him. I don't know, it's like that army hammer kind of look. Um, I, I can't articulate it beyond that. And I think that might be what holds me back from seeing him as Bond, like on paper. I think he's, yeah, he's just the right age. He's at a really good point in his career to potentially have that breakout role. Um, and yet there's something that holds him back for me, and I know he's very popular with a lot of people. Um, but yeah, th there is just something so, sort of, California <laughs> about his look. And I, I really wish I could articulate myself better than that, but um, it, it does, you know, hold him back for me. So, sorry, Oliver Jackson Cohen, but it's a spilled martini glass. Thomas Doherty is a name that has sprung up recently, um, another Scottish actor, uh, 28 years old as of this video, um, and I think it's because he had a main role in the, uh, what, reboot, do we call it, of Gossip Girl? Uh, so I think that brought um, 
his name to a lot of people's attention. He has really good sharp features and very piercing eyes, which is obviously always good for Bond. Again, I think he just falls into that bracket of just being a little too pretty, a little too model-like. Um, in, in terms of his features to potentially be James Bond. So this is another spilled martini glass, unfortunately. Sam Claflin next, uh, who, again, I, I think he's quite recognisable. He's had a lot of very, I mean, my God, he was in Pirates of the Caribbean. He was in a bunch of Hunger Games films, like, you know, that alone. Enola Holmes, he's Mycroft Holmes in that. Um, like, he's, he's had some fairly big roles. He was in Peaky Blinders, obviously. And yeah, I think... He could be really good, actually. Um, I think he is a very solid actor from the work that I've seen of him. I think he's really good presence. Um, I think he looks the part. He just has that right level of handsome but rugged that I think is really good for Bond. Um, he gets a full martini glass from me. Another Kingsman alumni here with Edward Holcroft, who was uh, an antagonist in um, in those films. Uh, and he was very memorable in London Spy, which I highly recommend. Uh, ben Whishaw stars in that really excellent series. I, I enjoyed that so much when it first came out. He's another one of those actors where he just has a kind of face that you remember and recognize in other things. Because just looking at his filmography, not that extensive, to be perfectly honest. He's been in a lot of very good, solid stuff. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm surprised I thought he would have had a, a, a far more lengthy uh, IMDb list. He's another actor that I think has a very kind of, like, old-school features uh, about him, which is interesting. Uh, I thought he was really good in London Spy. Uh, he coincidentally, he plays a spy. Um, he's really good in that. I think he's a really interesting actor but yeah i think he would be, i think he would be good i think he's a really good actor i think he holds himself really well there is a kind of a, a piercing uh, element to him whenever i've seen in like interviews or on the red carpet or something there is something slightly intimidating about him which i think is good uh and again unusual features but still quite handsome um and still quite rugged actually in a lot of ways uh he gets a full martini glass from me and finally we come to neville longbottom himself matthew lewis whose name has indeed been banded around in uh, potential bond circles um again this is uh, you know a, a bit too much of a you know a kit harrington sort of thing for me where he is Neville Longbottom, and I won't be able to see past that. And the headlines, if he were to be cast, would be Neville Longbottom is James Bond, and wouldn't everyone just find that hilarious? Uh, again, you know, great meme potential. And you know what? I don't want to undersell Matthew Lewis. Like, I think that he is a very good actor, um, and I think he probably could do Bond, to be perfectly honest, but I think he just has that association with that really iconic role in that really iconic film series, and... I, I, I can't see past it. So, sorry that we're ending on a spilled martini, but there we are. Sorry, Matthew. Whew. Similar to last year, I'm finishing this being kind of like, that was really extensive. I'm probably not gonna be having to talk about new potential Bond actors for some time, and yet, who knows, maybe if we don't have a, a another another Bond by June 2024, I'll be doing this all over again with another 20-odd names of uh, people who are always in the tabloids and on the bookies. Please do let me know your own thoughts on these candidates in the comments section below. Let me know your top three, if you have them. Um, and also below, you can of course subscribe to this channel and click the Mrs. Bell notification button to stay super up-to-date on future video uploads, which could well <laughs> include a June 2024 video talking about 20-odd more potential James Bond candidates. Uh, we'll be going through every male actor in the world through, you know, in their 30s and 40s. Also below are links to a variety of my social media pages, so please do follow me on those platforms if you care to do so. And with all that being said, and until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.